Okay, so this video is to demonstrate how to set up and run a DGG gel using the Cleveland Scientific DGG kit. So we've got our magnetic stirrer. On top of that, we've got gradient mixer. That's connected to a peristaltic pump. This is the model MUD02. And then that's feeding into the casting base with the glass plates. We've got that connected to a gel loading tip, which is going to be controlling the flow of gel into the glass plates. So we've already made all of our solutions that are outlined in the manual. We've got our MUDO2 pump set to 12 RPM, which equates to 10 milliliters per minute. So this will be different on the different models of pump, but you can easily test it. And they're also written with the different types of tubing in the manual, what the flow rates will be. So we're going to add our um, polymerizing agents into our, into our solutions now and then we'll start casting the gel. So we've got our first solution going into the first well of the gradient mixer. I'm going to turn on our magnetic stirrer. So this is in the first one the high denaturing solution and we've also got an amount of DNA dye in there which is going to indicate the gradient of the gel once it's been poured. Into our second well, we're going to put the low denaturing solution. <laughs> so, adding our, our second denaturing solution now. And we're going to open the first valve and we're going to turn on the pump. And what you're going to do here is wait until the level of fluid in this first well drops below the level of fluid in the second well and at that point you can open the second valve. So let's drop below now, so now we're opening the second valve. And now our lower denaturing solution is flowing into the first well and they're mixing together, so as the pump flows through we're getting a mixing of the, the two denaturing solutions and that will create the gradient. So our gel's just reaching our pipette tip now. So now that we've finished loading our gel, I see the gels pull up the, the line where we would insert the combs, we've got to clean out the gradient mixer, because otherwise the gel will polymerize inside the gradient mixer. And when we try and pour our next gel, uh, it will all be blocked up and we won't be able to do anything. So what we've done is we've poured some water into the uh, second well of the gradient mixer and we're going to leave the pump running and the pump's going to flush water through the system uh, and get rid of all that unpolymerized gel to make sure it doesn't polymerize within the tubing. To make this go a little bit faster as well we can actually turn, turn the speed up on the peristaltic pump. So I just put a little bit more pressure on the system and that's you uh, force the liquid through it. So once you've finished the, the cleaning procedure of the gradient mixer, you can move on to casting your second gel and the procedure is exactly the same as the first. So we've poured our gels, uh, the first uh, denaturing gradient gel, up to this level. And now we're going to wait for this to polymerize, and then we can add our stacking gel. So for this particular gel, we've also made a stacking gel that we're adding on top of our gradient gel. And that's where we're going to insert our combs in. So that stacking gel is a 0% denaturing gel. 
otherwise it's essentially the same as the rest of the gel. So we've moved our gels into the tank and put the lid on uh, and we're now preheating the buffer to 60 degrees. That preheat the buffer and all the well and all the uh, gels and we've taken the combs out of the gel so we've got well formation here. Once we've preheated to 60 degrees we'll load our samples and connect to the power supply using the electrode cables and start the run. Okay so we've preheated our buffer tank to 60 degrees now, keep it nice and warm. Uh, and we're going to load our samples into the wells of the gel. you notice when you take the lid off the tank to load samples, the heating will cut out because there's a magnetic switch in there that prevents the, uh, the moving parts from going while the lid's off. So once you've finished loading all of the DNA on one side, you can just carry on loading on the other side and then connect the lid back to the tank, connect the cables from the lid to the power pack and then start the gel run. Now we've set our power pack up, we're going to press start and then we're going to leave our gel to run overnight. Okay so our DNA gel's finished running, you can see the dyes actually run out of the bottom of the gel but because we're doing DGT and the way we've been doing it is for a heteroduplex analysis, the DNA will actually stop once it's denatured, it will stop running. So it doesn't matter how long it runs for, whether the dye runs out. Depending on what experiment you're conducting, it will be slightly different. You might need to adjust the timings. Go. So we're going to separate the two plates using the plate separation tool. And we can put the, the plate which the gel doesn't stick to one side. Now we're going to remove the uh, the stacking gel from the top of the from the top of the gel, so we just end up with the the main denaturing gel. So we've now moved our gel from the plate into a staining tray. Uh, and we've put inside the staining tray 100 microliters of 1 times TAE and we're going to add 1 microliter of cyber gold uh, for the staining of the DNA. So we're now covering our staining tray with aluminium foil. That's going to protect the, uh, the, the DNA stain from light so we don't get any reduction in the fluorescence. And we're going to set our, uh, we're using an orbital shaker, a uh, very low RPM just for slight mixing of the liquid on top of the gel. Okay, so we've moved our gel from our staining tray using our gel scoop and put it on the transilluminator of our gel lock system. So we're going to put this into here, close this up, and then connect to the gel dock and image the gel.